This episode of Beyond the Battlefield is presented to you by the Curtis Brown Foundation. Join Curtis as he interviews Michael and Evelyn Martin to have a deep and transparent discussion and to share their testimonies about traumatic experiences that they have lived through. Traumatic experiences always impact our mental well-being, often motivating us to find ways to numb the pain or forget the memories from our experiences. Curtis, Michael, and Evelyn share their hearts about what they have endured, but most importantly, how they found healing from these experiences. And they found and received their healing from the only person that could give it to them, and that's Jesus Christ. To the people we were before that great day. Welcome to Beyond the Battlefield. Guys, we're all in the same war, and we're all work, walking across the same battlefield called life. So today we're gonna talk and have stories of people who have walked through many things in life, but come out on the other side through the grace of God. But first of all, before we get started, I would like to thank Mattress Mac and Gallery Furniture here off of Grand Parkway in Richmond, Texas for allowing us to film here, and he's allowing us to, to do things and share stories about overcoming. Today, I happen to have a special guest today, Evelyn Martin, and her husband, Michael. Good nice to have you. you guys here today. Thank Thanks you. for having Thank us. You. Man, uh, <clears throat> you are on my very first show. Isn't Yay! that awesome? Woo! Wow. That's, that's <laughs> Thank amazing. You. Thank and you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. And you guys are with <clears throat> Martin Realty out of Martin, Fulcher. Martin Mortgage. Ma Martin Mortgage. Mm -hmm. I, I stand cor I said corrected. <laughs> out of uh, Fulcher, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So if you guys are looking to buy a home or sell a home, Reach out to, to this amazing couple. They've uh, been a huge encouragement to me through uh, many ways and a true blessing. And, and it's an honor to have you here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So as, as we're talking today, this show is about stories about overcoming. Mm -hmm. We all go through things in life. We go through trials and we wonder, where's God? I, I can think of one amazing thing is when I read the story of Esther. In the story of Esther, it's, it's a long book, it's a powerful book that never mentions God in it. Hmm. But when you finish it, you see God's hand involved in every bit of it. And I see that in you guys, oh, in yeah. your story. Oh. Those times to where we never seen God involved mm -hmm. in, in our lives, but mm -hmm. when we look now, He was all over it. Right. We just didn't recognize who He was, right? Right, yes. right. And so, <clears throat> you know, Michael, you went through a traumatic thing when you were young. And, yes, sir. And uh, if you could just share with them just your heart, because um, there's other people that have walked through this and saying, wow, how do I get past this? Yeah, so I grew up in a very small town in northern Indiana, and um, when I was a child, um, you know, it was my brother and my two sisters and myself, and um, you know, like a lot of families, uh, parents didn't quite get along. Um, we went through a long period of time where just heard a lot of fighting, a lot of um, yelling in the household, a lot of anger. Um, my parents actually got divorced once, then remarried, and which probably wasn't the best thing. Um, and in 1983, my mother, who had a, uh, a drinking problem for many years, she actually committed suicide in front of my brother and myself, um, with my father there also. and. Um, they were fighting in the bathroom when we heard them and opened the door and she pulled the trigger. And so for a very long time when I was a kid, I just was very, very angry, you know. Um, we believed in God, but we weren't really churchgoers or anything. Right. But I happened to go to church when I was a kid after that happened, and I was 12 at this time. and. There was a gentleman there that was running a church group and he sat down and talked with me and it was 
it's kind of surreal when I look back on it, you know, being an adult and knowing how I talk to kids and what you say to kids. Um, he told me that since my mom committed suicide, she would never be in heaven. And from that time on, you know, I was pretty, you know, pretty angry and um, kind of said, well, if he's not going to have her, then, you know, right. I don't want anything to do with him, right? So that's kind of the way it went. And, um, you know, throughout my childhood, got in and out of trouble, in and out of jail, and um, just through a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of, you know, drinking and, you know, a lot of... And unfortunately, just like me being a war veteran, you can't unsee those things, those vivid images a lot of times that, that especially with somebody that's such a huge impact on your your life, like your like your mother. Absolutely. Um, that sticks with you, and you're like, how can I get beyond this? Forever. Yeah. And it's, it's like war, or whether it be growing up with my dad till um, the, the abuse and the addiction that, that he dealt with, um, which, you know, just went off to us you know he his anger went to us Absolutely. that's how he that, we were his out sins of the father sins of the father and so um and and then war thinking man god you know how could how could we you allow these things if, if there's if you're really real or you really love us how could you allow these things and or allow us to go through them but then you, you if you were like me and i and it, I was doing everything I could to try to find that fulfillment, yeah. to fill that void, fill the void, yes. to uh, cover the pain, yep. and uh, how can I take these images away? And right. unfortunately, a lot of the times it was through, through whether it be through alcohol, right. unfortunately a lot of times it was uh, even even uh, sex, right. it was fine, yeah, pornography, uh, yeah, I, I was looking for a relationship, I was longing a relationship with somebody. But always because I didn't know what I was really looking for, and my vision, my my uh, image of God wasn't. It was like yours. Right. <laughs> well, if my dad says this is who God is, and he's a reflection of him, I don't want anything don't to, to do, do with it. it. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I understand that struggle, and, and a lot of our people out here listening understand that struggle. They're like, well, if that's who God is, I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. But that's not who God is. Yeah. And then, then there was this time, and then that space that you're searching for that relationship, that fulfillment, and and so, then we come to your wife, who wasn't your wife at that time. She hadn't come along. She wasn't part of your life. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, you know, because when I met Evelyn, she already had a, a child, Alyssa, who's now my child, and. You know, I didn't celebrate Christmas because it was it was actually on the day before Christmas Eve when my mom did this. And so for the longest time, forever, I never celebrated Christmas, never did anything with Christmas, right? And after meeting Evelyn and, you know, when we got married and I had Alyssa then, you know, she was my instant kid. And um, it was wonderful because it was kind of brought Christmas back, you know, because I was right. like, well, I got to celebrate it for her. So that kind of brought it back and then... Alyssa actually in high school started going to some church groups and with uh, Grace Fellowship and she tried to get me to go and I was kind of ah, not really ready for that but she got Evelyn to go and finally at some point I just kind of said you know what I'm going to I'm going to go for her I'm going to give it a try and so she kind of brought so you, Christmas you back to, to me see, and even then, though God isn't mentioned in that you start to see him at work yeah mm -hmm. absolutely but before you guys met Evelyn, you went through some traumatic things. Mm -hmm. You were uh, living the life, going to school, or you had finished college, right? Or I had finished college. You had finished college. Yes. You had a boyfriend. I you had, had life all planned out, didn't you? I did. Um, I had I had married my high school sweetheart, and that was where Alyssa was from that relationship that she was born, but it didn't last um, very long. So. I was moving on and I met this wonderful man and he was just a, a great positive influence and I really didn't have that kind of relationship with a man um, my whole life. He just, right. you know, positivity and, and building me up and it was just a, a wonderful thing. Um, and during the course of our relationship, um, we were in a terrible car accident and it happened on Halloween night and he was killed instantly and I was very badly I was badly injured and I was in the hospital for a long time in a coma and I had a lot of experiences when I was in the in my coma and and afterwards and 
Um, I didn't really talk about them because I just kind of came from this this frame of thinking that I just needed to pick myself back up and get keep going. I right. couldn't dwell on what happened and I couldn't talk about it and look for sympathy. It was just something I just had to work through and just get over it and keep going and take care of my child. And um, it, so over the years, you know, th these things just were just happening in my life. And um, when I look back, I realized that God was, was working through my life in different situations. Um, I met Michael uh, just over a year after the accident. And um, we talked about our stories. And it took a while for us to um, come together and understand each other. But we've been married. and just, you know, found God together and helped each other through it. And it's been a, an amazing, amazing story. I remember <clears throat> the comment you guys made the other day that you said that uh, we were trying to save each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how how I can just see picture God because I've been in that part too. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in there for that. I'm gonna save that girl. You know. Yeah. And but unfortunately, it ended up going the opposite direction. Right. But you see God's hand in this. Mm -hmm. You see how God, I think of a triangle. Um, I, I remember Gary Smalley share, sharing an example one time and he drew this triangle out and he put God He put God at the top and he put the husband here and the wife here. And they were always thinking, well, you know, there was this empty space. They couldn't cross that line here to get together. And they were trying to work it out. But when they started focusing on God up here at the top, and focusing on drawing closer to God, the amazing thing was is they were drawing closer to each other. So when we focus on God, He draws us closer to each other. And a lot of times it's through those struggles that God uses to where we realize, hey, I'm not in control. Hmm. Well, I think you just read through what I said because it was, you know, during the years that we met and we're getting to know each other and got married and even through our, our early married years, it was wasn't always easy. We're still trying to heal each other and help each other and work through it, but we just knew that we had to be together. But when we started going to church, I think that's whenever we really started having this different kind of connection and right. different kind of love and it forgiveness love. for each other. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's <laughs> an amazing how we try, just like you growing up, our, our picture of love was different and your picture when we, your household when you grew up was different. Mm -hmm. um, but God is that pure love, that agape love, that un can, unconditional love. And that's where he's bringing us to as, as husband and wife. Because here's the reality. Just like God knows those deepest hurts in us, Michael, and he knows our biggest screw-ups, our wives know that too. <laughs> but they were willing to say, you know what, I love you who, for who you are. And, we, and, I, and I commend my wife for that, and I know you do yours. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it's amazing how God works that out. Right. He's, make, he's transforming us into the image of His Son mm -hmm. to where we'll lay our life down. And it's a, continu a continuing growing process. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to find ways to glorify Him and what, what are some of the things I can do in my life to glorify Him. And Michael and I talk about it a lot, like as a couple, what can we do? And um, and I, I shared this with you the, when we talked the other day, but I wanted to talk about it again because after we talked about it, it just kind of came to a realization for me, and I, I've been, it's been really heavy on me. Right. And that was that um, last Sunday, whenever I was listening to our pastor in a sermon, it was about um, heaven and going to heaven and people who had um, experiences, going to near-death experiences mm -hmm. and visiting heaven, and they all describe it as going through a tunnel with all this light and warmth and love and they didn't want to leave and it was just so wonderful and I just thought back about the things that happened to me whenever I was in the coma and when after I was out of the coma and some of the experiences I was having and I had always I had buried it and I started really you know thinking about it vividly and I remember that I was going through a tunnel you know pri prior to my accident I lived a life of drinking and, and sin and, and it, I mean I hadn't well we were looking for answers we we're looking for answers I was young um, I hadn't really accepted Jesus in, in my heart as my Savior at that time and whenever I was in my coma I, re, I recall just going through this tunnel that everyone describes but mine was dark and I didn't feel scared but I didn't feel that warmth I felt like what's going on what is this 
And when I got to the end, I was being told I had to go back. I had to go back. I needed to get out of there. Right. And when I, I don't, I didn't wake up from that, but I just remember feeling like this was not the place for me. And I think shortly after that, I woke up and I realize now that God saved me, did not want me to die. And he didn't want me to go to where I would have maybe had gone if I had. And um, that I need to be working really hard to glorify him and think, think of things that I can do to praise him and thank him for saving right. my life. And, and Michael and I can't relate to it in the coma aspect, but we can relate to it in life of thinking we were looking for the answers. We were run, and we were running after something, weren't we? Right. And but what were we running for? We wanted peace. Yeah. We just didn't know where to find it. And so when uh, when I sit there and I look at at, at your story, we don't hear these stories, Evelyn. Uh, battling with the darkness. Mm -hmm. We don't hear these stories. You're right. All we hear are the good things. Right. Well, I seen the light. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going towards the light, but we don't hear the, the other side. And that other side is, what if we don't know Christ? Mm -hmm. There's that dark side. But then that God's grace, it extends, and His mercy extends farther than we could ever imagine. Yeah. And His grace and His mercy was reaching out to you. Mm-hmm. And he saved you. He preserved you. He preserved you for, like we were talking about Esther, for such a time as this. Right. And to share your story of, he used the darkness to lead you to the light. Wow. How could you ever recognize the light if you'd never experienced the darkness? That's, That's right. That's kind of like, how could you ever recognize uh, what peace is if you've never experienced just total um, fear and total, uh, you know, destruction? you would never recognize the difference. Mm -hmm. But that's who God is. He is peace. He is the light. I see the light now. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> and it's amazing how God, His grace just will reach out as far as He can to save us. And unfortunately, some people don't get that opportunity. And I think of the scripture, we talked about this the other day, Romans 8, 28. That, you know, God works all things out for the good for those who love Him are called according to His purpose. God didn't say, hey, I'm going to instantaneously make things good, did he? Because what this whole thing is, what the verse is about, is him being glorified. Hmm. And that's what he desires. And that's what you talked about a minute ago. You want to be able to glorify God. Yeah. And that's what our life should be, is glorifying God. And wow, how can we not glorify him when we look what he brought us from? Because right. now we, we see the difference, don't we, Michael? Absolutely. We see, this is where I was, this is what I was doing, and man, you know, that what is it, the, the true meaning of, of uh, oh gosh, I went blank, come on, help me out here, of, um, true, uh, true meaning, meaning of, of life. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I went blank, that's okay, it's, guy, understand, I have these blank spots between here and here, it's about that what, yeah, about that what, <laughs> insanity. True meaning and insanity, okay. doing the same thing it's, over yes. and over again, yes, expecting right. a different result. Yeah. See, once in a while, air fills that area and I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing just to see God's grace in our lives. And now, when we look back now, just like when we read the story of Esther, what do we see? We see God all over it. We didn't see it then. Right. We didn't know what we were looking for because everything... Everything that we've seen as a picture of God was something we really wanted to avoid because we were looking at the broken person who we thought was an example of God. Yeah. And that's the same with us when people looked at us. So now when we think of we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony, when people look at us now, they, can, they can't say that's the same person. They can't say that, hey, that it's not that same definition of insanity. Something stepped in there and changed them. Yeah. And as we live our lives striving to glorify God, what happens? People start watching and they start seeing. Seeing and saying, I want that. Right. Not that we don't falter sometimes still. Oh, no. But no. So I just want to put that out there. But, um, but And for you wives out there, you heard that. <laughs> But um, I mean, it, it's just it's just a lot clearer now. And having children, one of the biggest things that just really struck me from your book was whenever you were told that you'd have a son named Micah and that he would be free from generational curse, curses. 
I just, I told Michael, I said, I would love that for our children. I would love for our three daughters to, to be free from generational curses and we teach them, you know, what we have learned is something that it does not have to be, or we experience does not have to be repeated. You can learn from it. Right. That's exactly right. And, <clears throat> and, and God shows His grace in our lives and, he, and we, want to, we want them to experience His grace and His love. And the, the key thing is, is, is being transparent to our kids. Yes. As hard as it is, we need to be able to say, you know what, why I'm telling you not to do this is because, you know, I've walked through that. And I'm not happy, I'm not proud of walking through that, but I don't want you to be hurt like I was hurt. Yep. Right. Guys, right. it's been amazing. Yeah. And I look forward to see what God's going to do with the show, and I'm praying for your, your family, your, your business, and <laughs> Thank I, I want to see God just uh, grow things and, and for your protection. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you very much. And I just want to close this out, guys, and I want to pray for everybody listening, too, that we will pray um, that God will just uh, touch your hearts like he's touched ours. Father God, thank you again for the freedom we have to worship you. I thank you for your love for us. Lord, I pray for everybody out there that's watching this, Lord God, that you would touch their lives and that you would uh, really reveal yourself to them that they experience of who you are, not who they thought you were or what they had experienced through life through somebody who really didn't know you and was hurting too. And that you would bring healing in their heart and their spirit and in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And guys, I want you to know, I want to re reiterate, thank you Gallery Furniture and Mattress Mac for allowing us to film here, Beyond the Battlefield, Overcoming Life's Landmines. Join us every week. We'd love to have you. You can also learn more about our foundation, Curtis Brown Foundation, at curtisbrown.org, where we're helping veterans and their families overcome life struggles. Order God is Bigger on, at uh, Amazon. It's on Amazon's best sales. And remember that every book you order goes directly to fund the Curtis Brown Foundation to help our veterans or families. Before we, before we close this out, we got to share, allow Michael to share this, this, this beautiful song. And uh, man, it's an honor to have you play and sing for us. Well, thank you very much. And remember, you asked for this. I asked for this. What's the song? So. What's the song? This is a song by Johnny Lang. It's called That Great Day. And it's, uh, it's more about um, being renewed and um, uh, baptism and you know purifying coming out whole amen awesome man <clears throat> Children, mothers, and fathers in his sweet name. To drown all our sins and come up again forever changed. Never to return. To the people we were before that great day. Amen. We'll patiently wait till we see his face. And when he appears, the people we were before that great day.
You are my rock star, man. It's beautiful. Thank you, man. Love you. Love you too, man. It's beautiful. Y'all <laughs> have a blessed day. <laughs> I can't say anymore.